Hello and welcome, my name is Lino Tavros and in this video we will continue with our series for Azure AI Studio with Code. We will discuss in this one the fact that AI uh, Studio provides tracing capabilities for logging and managing your LLM application tests and evaluations as well. It allows you to uh, debug and monitor by drilling into the trace view itself. With tracing you can have uh, a cloud-based location to persist and track your historical tests and, exact, and, and easily uh, extract and visualize the test results themselves. This enables you to compare the outputs of different test cases and reuse previous test assets for future use, such as human feedback or data curation. So let's go ahead and see how we can enable it and get it to work. So the first thing you want to do, we'll go back into our instance that we have running in the compute that we started in the VS container itself in Visual Studio Code. And if you remember, we had our source in here and we had this chat request.python file that contains the three methods, one for the embedding of the question, one for the context, and one for the response. You get to choose which one you would like to do the tracing on. So if I go, for instance, right before this get response, which is a very important, of course, method that will get called, if I can say at trace, that is the first step you'll have to do to be able to signal to the system so that when you run the flow itself, you would like to trace into this get response function automatically. The next step, depending if this was uh, something that happened, maybe the following day you came back, you want to make sure that you're actually logged into the AZ, the Azure CLI. So from here, I will actually bring in my command AZ login, and I will be passing uh, the parameter for use device code so I can actually do this on the web as a browser as well. Let me go ahead and run this. It will actually uh, give you the, the, the code. So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard. And I need to go to Microsoft.com device login and enter that code to be able to get it to work. So there we go. I'm going there and I'm going to go ahead and paste that code that I was given. We'll say next. And now I'm going to actually tell it which account I would like to use for my AZ session. We'll say continue. And with that, you should be in good shape. Now, when I go back to my command line, it should actually retrieve all my different subscription and tenant. And it will tell you which one do you want to use. I actually want to use my number two in here for Microsoft Regional Directory. It's fine. We'll say two. Let me click here. We'll say two. And now I have the correct one. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of that. And I'm ready again. Let me make also this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. The next step, of course, is very important. By default, your tracing is happening locally on your machine. So one of the things that you have to do is to set up the prompt flow using the prompt flow command line to tell it that I do not want to do the tracing on my machine. I want to send it directly to the portal in Azure itself. So the, uh, the syntax for it will look like this. I know it looks like a very long one, <laughs> but here it says uh, PF for, for the prompt flow. We'll do a config set. And then I'm going to say trace.destination equals Azure ML. The default is local, right? I have to pass this to Azure ML. And of course, if you're going to do that, you need to tell it what your subscription is, which resource group you would like to do this in, and the provider, of course, for the machine learning services workspace is what the project name is. We already have all of these things directly from my portal. I know what my Azure AI Studio project name is. I know what my resource group name is. And I know, of course, what my subscription is. And if you ever wonder what these things are, you can always go back and open up the environment and you have all your environment for everything available for you in here. Sounds good? All right, so let's go ahead and substitute all of that with the correct values. I'm going to do a control V again. And this time, as you can see, I am passing my correct uh, subscription ID, my resource uh, group name, and finally the name of the project that was created for me in my portal automatically. Okay, let me go ahead and push enter on this. And hopefully it will come back and it will be successful. And now any tracing that I haven't add trace before out of a function when I run this as a flow, it will be traced automatically inside uh, of the portal itself, inside of my resource group. That means I'll have access to my storage account to keep all the stuff in as well. And as you can see here, it's telling you that this might take some minutes. So be patient with it. It needs a lot of things to set up, especially the initialization of the Cosmos DB that is being used behind the scene to make this happen as well. Once it's done, I'll be right back. And indeed, after maybe about four minutes or so, 
it finished and it was successful and at the end it will tell you that the the trace destination set for the azure ml has been successful so you are pretty much ready to run your flow at this point i also noticed that when i actually run my flow right now i usually get an error and that error um, will be module not found error because no module uh, name chat request that means my running the flow does not have access to the source folder itself. So if you would like to run everything without having to put the entire uh, path for everything you're doing, you can actually come in here and do something like this. I'm gonna type it in and here we'll say export Python path and it has to equals to the, uh, to the source folder of the Python path. Just by passing this, you will be able to tell the system that, hey, if I'm running something from the outside of the, the, uh, the directory, always have access to the modules inside of the source as well. So we'll run this one as well and we'll be in pretty good shape. At this time, folks, let me clear also the screen so you can see it better. I need to run the Python file that will do the run flow itself by passing in the argument of my questions that I'm trying to ask. So if I do a control V in here, this is what I'm intending to actually do. I'm going to say Python and I'm going to go into a folder called util that comes automatically from the template, which I really like. Uh, so if you go down here to where it says util for the folder and run flow, this is part of the template. You don't have to write this, but it's an extremely valuable template that you can reuse over and over with all the different templates that you have to run them, especially when you get into evaluations and you are running tons of evaluations. You want this to be your main template so that you don't have to write too much code. And inside of this template for the run flow, you will notice that we have a main function in here that will get called, of course, when you run this uh, specific Python file. It actually setting up, uh, instantiating, of course, the Azure configuration is setting up the endpoint for OpenAI and the API key and everything else. But it will actually start setting up what we call the base run. That means it will set up um, the, 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 the client for the, uh, for the prompt flow, set up where the flow is. In my instance, my flow is all under the source folder. So that means you can run this with multiple four. Maybe you have source one, source two. Maybe you want to try out with two or three different flows. But this one will get to everything inside of the source. And then we will tell it that I would like to generate a brand new file, which is going to be a temporary file. It will be deleted at the end of this, which is a JSONL file that will contain some instructions that I need during the run as well. So this file doesn't exist. This one will be created and deleted just during the run itself. And as you can see, what it will do with it, it will open it for a, with a right uh, privilege to be able to dump the JSON for the question and all the chat history. So this will always be passed finally into the final request to the LLM by actually dumping always in the data file temporarily the question and all the chat history from previous conversations and so on. And then finally, we will do the base run. And that's the run command on the power uh, on the prompt flow client itself, passing it the flow, passing it the file that we just created temporarily that contains the questions and the history as well. We'll set the column mapping to tell it exactly where to go get the questions and the chat history right now is an empty array because we're not using really a conversation it's not a chat it's pretty much a completion and i'm going to say stream equal to true try it out with two different ways stream equal to true stream equal to false to see actually how each character really fast coming in or wait till everything gets created and then dumped right away into the system and then finally, we will actually get the details from the client and we'll print out the answers that came back. Notice here, I will delete my data file that I created temporarily. And then, of course, when I run the run flow, it's expecting me to pass whatever I give it as the, uh, the, the command arguments, which is in my case, if you see at the bottom in here, how can I access my medical records at Lambda Healthcare, for instance, that will be the one passed into uh, my main when I run it and at the end uh, we'll get the question we'll get also a default if you don't pass any questions so I'm putting this in here in case you don't pass any questions that's run the run flow it will have its own questions but in my, my case in here I'm overriding that with this question directly does that make sense all right let's go ahead and run it and see if we get an error <laughs> all right all right we can't open the file blah 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 no such file or directory it doesn't like the run flow in here so we need to find out what happened to be able to fix that problem 
and that usually happens a lot when you come back after maybe a day or two and you want to continue whenever you as instantiated vs container it will also go back all the way to the root of the folder that the vs container is pointing to which is the wrong place of course so i have to do cd code and then we will need to go ahead into the gem uh, project itself now you notice i'm still inside of my branch that i created earlier in a previous video and now we can go ahead and run the python one more time and let's see if this time it will work and it will not it will say i cannot find the azure subscription id and you will actually wonder why because a lot of documentation says that this was supposed to work the fact is my subscription id my resource group and the project name even though they are in an environment they are not inside of this um, terminal they're not in the bash in here as well so running something like this has no access to whatever you have in the environment from the shell the code has it but the shell doesn't so be careful with that as well so let's go ahead and fix this first of all let me clear so we can actually have a clean place so you will need to export in the shell itself your azure subscription I'll say export azure subscription id and pass the first one and the second one will be of course for the resource group let me do the same thing i'm going to copy that into the clipboard and we'll bring it in and there is my azure resource group and then finally you need to remember also to bring in your project name coming in from the azure ai studio so i'll say export this valuable information and we should be in pretty good shape now if i go back and run my uh, python run flow i'm expecting it this time to succeed let's go ahead and run this and indeed is actually starting it's uploading the run to the cloud and it's setting everything in here and it's great so we wait for it to finish but i can tell uh, from what i'm seeing in here that this is actually successful and it's working great notice if it's happening locally not in the portal itself it will be on a specific port um, um, locally on your machine but uh, i am interested in seeing this stuff definitely inside of the portal itself so now to the bad news <laughs> the bad news here folks is that if i open up uh, the portal let me go back to the portal in here i'm going to say i'd like to go to the azure ai studio all right let's see where tracing is now <laughs> obviously tracing has been written out so i would like to get to it to see where the uh, results of the tracing if I open up prompt flow, there will be nothing there. There will be nothing uh, in the AI services. I was hoping to see something regarding tracing and you will be very disappointed. After you spend some time looking around, how can I get to that tracing? You will not find it. Unfortunately, it is not there. But something that a lot of people do not notice, let me make this a little bit bigger a little bit. The uh, command line results that came back, notice it actually, uh, it did the, uh, um, the result coming back from the LLM is correct in here, okay? But if you go up a little bit, um, maybe a lot, <laughs> right, you will notice something very interesting in here. There will be the, uh, the URL on how to get to that specific um, uh, portal URL. So you cannot get to it from the portal itself, but you'll have to come in here and copy this guy right there this will have the portal url that gets you straight to the tracing itself i know i'm sure in the in the future this will be better so that i can definitely get to it because it's obviously in the portal in my storage but i'll have to get this so we'll uh, we'll copy this guy let me go ahead and copy it here into the clipboard and let me open up again my portal but this time i would like to maybe let's open up another tab in here and i'm going to say Control v and let's see if i can see the tracing now that actually resulted from running that flow and you will notice that i will be able to successful unfortunately it's showing up in here but there is no way to get to it from the user interface of azure ai studio all right so here are all the different things that were involved in running this and if i click on the view and outputs in here this is the part i'm most interested in for the tracing you see i can see the overview i can see all the outputs the logs the metrics the trace and the snapshot the instance that had been processed is one of one and one instance was completed i didn't have any failures so it's all looking good also this is my questions how can i access my medical records at london healthcare so it knows what the the question was if there was a history maybe that was a chap not a completion you will see it here as well the status was completed it's all looking good so now let's go ahead now and try to get some more tracing so i'm going to open up the logs and see if there was any logs in here for the azure ml let's say the execution logs for the text show me what happened i can see some metrics 
of course i'm doing this video because i'm interested in the next one <laughs> the trace one this is most important for me to be able to trace so let's go ahead and see how it traced my call so notice the get response ended up using 618 tokens so i can do the math of course find out how much this is costing me and it took about seven and a half seconds to do the whole thing i want to dig deeper to find out how much i'm paying for embedding how much i'm paying for the the question for the history and also for the response coming back from the llm so let's open it up there is the embedding remember this is the embedding of the question only okay this is not the embedding of the uh, of the whole thing <laughs> of the documents right this is just your question it was only 12 tokens and it took four and a half seconds because it had to do a lot of things in the background and that is my prompty that prompty that's the file that i had all the information regarding my system prompt 606 it took 2.7 uh, seconds and then i converted from the template that that stuff does not take any tokens because that's internal does not use a model for embedding or for reaching the llm but of course the last one that is the one that ended up going to do with the gpt 4.0 which is the open champ it tells me it took 2.6 uh, seconds and it used 606. if you add all of these together it will end up with being 618 tokens and it took about 7.6 millisecond it all depends on the status of azure sometimes it's much faster sometimes it takes longer but in reality uh, this is how you can trace into each and every single one not only that but i can click on for instance the open embedding in here and i can see on the right side the entire embedding for the question i'm not sure if that's very important for you to actually see 1536 different uh, floats creating based on the question but at least it's in here if you would like to uh, to trace it and look at it and see what the input was in here using which model was used for the embedding if i go for instance to the convert uh, prompt template you will notice this is the full uh, system template at this point is being passed and i can trace into it to see exactly what is going on with the questions being asked but notice there are three different chunks that were included in the question itself before it went to the llm which is really important and then finally of course the major uh, question that came back with a response from the llm now i can actually see the maximum tokens that i asked for uh, which model i'm using the temperature i've been using the system message and the response that came back as well so this is how we can actually do tracing very very valuable the only thing is you have to get it from the command line copy and paste that link because you cannot get to it from the azure ai studio at least for right now all righty hopefully this was useful to you to show you how to do tracing directly from your local machine by uh, by executing a prompt flow and i'll see you again soon in another video thank you